Hello there and welcome to the June 2019 paper, we're on paper 1 and we're looking at question 14 here, the final question of this paper. So, the curve C is the standard Cartesian plane, uh, uh, curve C in the standard Cartesian plane is defined by the equation x equals 4 sine 2y. The curve C passes through the origin, finds the value of dy by dx at the origin. So, the first thing I think I'll do here is find dx by dy because we've got an equation for x in terms of y here. So that's going to be 8 cos 2y. So therefore dy by dx is just going to be 1 over 8 cos 2y. And I know that it's going to be the origin, and that has two parts to it, the x-coordinate of 0, but also the y-coordinate of 0. So I'm now going to substitute in y equals 0. So the gradient there is going to be 1 over 8, because cos of 0 is uh, 1, so it's 1 over 8. Use the small angle approximation for sine 2y to find an equation linking x and y for points close to the origin. So sine 2y is going to be approximately 2y when uh, y is small. So x is going to equal 8y when y is small. Explain the relationship between your answer in part A and part B. Well, if you take x equals 8y and divide both sides by 8, then you're going to get y equals 1 over 8x, where the gradient of this line is 1 over 8, which is the same as, which is the same as our differentiated gradient. So it does make sense, the two things there have matched up. Makes, uh, same as our differentiation gradient. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to A, B, I, and B, I, I. Let's now move on to part C. So we have uh, part C, which is show that for all points x, y lying on C, dy by dx is equal to 1 over A root B minus x squared, where A and B are constants to be found. So uh, we already have from the first part that dy by dx is equal to 1 over 8 cos 2y. So now what we just need to do is somehow turn this cos 2y back into something to do with x's. So that means I'm going to have to find some relationship between cos 2y and sine 2y. Now I could use double angle formula here, but I think it's actually going to be a bit more straightforward if I just return to sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That bog standard identity. Let's just replace x with the angle that we're working with here, which is 2y. So sine squared 2y plus cos squared 2y. As long as the angles are the same there, this rule still works. Now I'm looking to turn cos 2y into something to do with sine. So if I subtract the sine squared 2y onto the other side, I get cos squared 2y equals 1 minus sine squared 2y. And then if I take a square root, I get cos 2y equals root 1 minus sine squared 2y. Now, why is it not plus or minus at this point here? Well, that's why they've got this boundary in between minus pi by 4 to pi by 4, because on the cos 2y graph, it's just going to be positive. So we don't need any negatives on this uh, plus or minus here. It's just the positive one, because it's how the cos 2y graph looks in between the boundaries of minus pi by 4 to pi by 4. So what this now means is that... Um, is that cos 2y is equal to this expression here. So um, 
So now what we need to do with this is put it back in terms of x. So if I now know that um, sine squared 2y is in here, it's going to be x over 4 that is going to be my substitution for sine squared 2y. So it would be 1 minus x over 4 squared. Now this needs to be a little bit simplified because I've only got an x squared on here. So if I now expand this, it would be 1 minus x squared over 16. Now if I factorise out root 1 over 16 to the front, that's going to give me 16 minus x squared. And root 1 over 16 is going to be 1 quarter root 16 minus x squared. I don't really like doing maths on the side of a page, but it just did make sense to flow on from here. So what I can now do is I can turn my cos 2y into 1 quarter root 16 minus x squared. So it's going to be 1 over 8 times by 1 quarter root 16 minus x squared and then the 8 times the quarter will give you 2 so it would be 1 over 2 root 16 minus x squared. So there we are, that's the answer to this question and so a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 16. So there we are, that's the end of this paper here, so that's 7 marks for question 14 there and it wasn't a bad paper to be fair, let's move on to paper 2, see if it's got any more challenging questions for us and hopefully you found these little videos helpful. Thanks very much for watching.